Hi everyone, this is Erin from Label Studio and I'm going to be walking you through how to use our generative AI templates, but specifically for today, that's our human preference collection for our LHF. Now, if you're new to generative AI or data labeling or even fine tuning some of these large generative models, don't freak out, I've got you. All of these models are all designed so that you can get going as easy as possible within the generative AI ecosystem and within data labeling. Now, for today's tutorial, we will be using tools like Docker, VS Code, and working with JSON files and some basic Python. If that's new to you, that's totally okay. I've got copy and paste scripts that you can use and everything will be available not only here, but in our documentation and on GitHub. If that's still overwhelming, that's okay. Go back to our Label Studio from zero to one tutorial and it'll teach you how to get started with Docker and kind of the bits and pieces behind it all. But Without further ado, let's begin. For kind of a quick preview, this is my screen that I'm working with today, and I've got a few different windows open. I've got a terminal open up in that top upper right or upper left hand corner. I've got Docker open. I've got our documentation open, which has more details, links, and resources all about human preference for collection for RLHF. And I've got VS Code open. Now, before we begin, I want to dive a little bit more into what exactly RLHF is and why do we need human preference collection in the first place or why you might use this tutorial. Now, for human preference collection and RLHF, RLHF is reinforcement learning from human feedback. So it's using existing, you know, con like an existing model, say GPT or Llama, and then building another layer of context on top of it based on human feedback. In order to get that human feedback, you need to basically work with annotators to define the right context for your team. This is all data set development here. So we're just designing the data set in this example. Now, in this human preference collection, what we're going to do is it's super important that your annotators are trained on context. And we're going to be kind of in this example, highlighting the points and our data is going to be designed around how just difficult this can be if you don't have the right context. Because just like preferences and opinions, they are very subjective. However, for a real life example, training a, for fine tuning off of, with a target and initiative on financial training is a little bit different than say medical. Two very different fields, but have very industry specific knowledge and resources that they need to ascribe to. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be playing with some pretty made up silly examples, but you could see how it's really important to train your annotators and give them the context that hey, this is for a financial scenario, or this is for a medical scenario, and then making sure that they have the right resources and expertise in order to annotate the data correctly. With that all being said, let's dive into how this actually process works. Now, before we begin, the first thing we probably wanna get set up is Label Studio. And I do have all of these resources available to you in a GitHub file and in the tutorial, so please don't hesitate to reach out. We're starting off, here's just my terminal window. I'm using warp. Um, you can go ahead and see that here. I want to see and just get this started and open up a Docker container. So using label studio and Docker, I've got that command saved and you'll see it kind of going up and firing up. Now, if we close that warp container and go back to our full screen view, what you'll see is I now have a third container up here that is listed so you can see everything up and going. Let's open. A, go ahead and open this up by clicking on that 8080 and it'll take you there to localhost 8080 where it's held. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in this little window here and you'll see all of the different areas or the different projects I've been working on. And you can tell I've been recording a lot of demos today. But from here, what we'll be doing is creating a new project. Uh, human preference collection for RLHF. And then at this point, if you had an existing data set and you just wanted to import it here, you could do so. Um, if you just had an existing JSON file, what you could do is just go ahead and upload here, or if you wanted to sync from an existing cloud storage, but if it, you'll do so by adding in a URL there. However, for today, we'll be adding it via the API. Um, one thing I've noticed is that for large data sets or for fine tuning, it's usually easiest to add it via the API um, and the Label Studio SDK. So I'll get to that in a second. We'll walk through how to do that. But before we even get to that, you'll need to work on and get your labeling setup identified. And I'm gonna just close my window here for a second. 
hopefully you can still hear me, and we'll go navigate down to Generative AI in our labeling templates, and we'll go ahead and click on Human Preference Collection for RLHF. You'll notice here I can configure my data using text from the prompt. It'll give me a nice little preview where I can choose, is this or that a better option? And it'll have prompts, answers, and feedback given. Just because of the size of my window, these are going to be stacked on top of each other, but I'll show you what it looks like in practice. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And then again, it's time to import some data. So I'm going to minimize our browser and open up VS Code. So I'm going to bring myself back here to talk you through this. Um, to import data, first you've got to prep your data file. So this is our current JSON structure for the Label Studio Human Preference Collection file. And it's got a prompt and then two answers. So again, we're answering this or that, which is the better option. You'll notice in my example, I've got some pretty silly questions, but it's to highlight the fact that human preference is truly down to individual preference. So again, context and training your annotators on that context is super essential. So example, what is the best ice cream flavor ever? Um, are dogs or cats a better house pet? Or is Barbie or Oppenheimer a better movie? Again, super subjective based answers. Now let's get these subjective answers into Label Studio. For that, I've got a Python notebook that I'll be running within VS Code um, and just getting started. So again, starting, we're just going to install the Label Studio SDK. And then what we're going to do in this next line is we're going to import it in our next line, telling it, hey, this is where I've got Label Studio at. So giving that location, my API key and an API key that I will most certainly be resetting after filming all of these tutorials. And then the next line has project and it'll ask me for a project ID. So you'll find this project ID and it's something that I got hung up with at the beginning in our Label Studio one. So popping back to Label Studio, you'll see at the top of the screen where it says localhost slash projects slash six, um, we're looking for that six number. So the number after projects. Now, if you've got a ton of projects in your workspace and you're working with hundreds of them, this number can be very well highly, but just wanna grab that projects number. Again, minimizing the browser window and going back to VS Code, I've got that six number and I'm going to drop it here in the ID and then import tasks and just give me the file path of where those tasks are located at. So again, going to click run that. I'll get that nice, beautiful green check of what we're looking for and we can pop on back to Label Studio and I'll show you exactly where those are imported in. So again, minimizing VS Code and going back to the browser, what we'll see here, and I'm just gonna Command Shift R to refresh the screen. And you'll see that refresh here. I now have my annotations or my tasks loaded up here. Now let's try out some annotations together. I'm gonna click Label All Tasks, and it'll ask me, what is the best ice cream flavor ever? And I can click on my answer, vanilla or chocolate. I'm personally a chocolate person, and then click Submit. Are dogs or cat a better house pet? Now, I've had both dogs and cats, but right now I currently have a dog, so I will take that. And is Barbie or Oppenheimer a better movie? Um, I saw both, I did the whole Barbenheimer thing this weekend, and like honestly, it came down to length. I can't sit still through a three hour plus movie, so we're going with Barbie here. We've got no tasks left in our queue, our data has been annotated, and we're ready to go. Now, once you've kind of done that, well, you've got your data ready to go, and you can start you want to now export this data set to continue to train on top of or put in top of your fine tuning process or your RLHF process. You'll navigate back to the main project and just click on export and then choose the type of file that you would want your data annotated in or your, ex your data exported in. And it'll include those annotations as well as the original data as part of your data set. And so we can go ahead, for many people, just do JSON. It seems to be the best way to kind of do this, especially if you're continuing to work with it. JSON seems to be a pretty straightforward file. Go ahead and click export and then go from there. Now, I know that was pretty quick and I know that was a super fast walkthrough. So if you need to, go ahead, feel free, rewatch this video or check out our documentation on label studio slash guide. Again, if you have any further questions from that, feel free to find me on Slack and let me know if there's anything else I can do to help out with or anything th that I can keep you going with at this current time. Thank you for so much for watching this today and I hope that you enjoy our new generative AI templates and I'll catch you on the next one.